Usually calm people of Reddit. What makes you lose your shit? Story 24. When I'm fixing something slash putting something together, I put down my tool to check the instructions, only to have my tool completely disappear into the ether. I set it down right next to me. Where the fuck is it? Now I have to get up, wander around the room like a madman, cursing and fuming. Seriously though, I set it down right fucking next to me. How the fuck does it just disappear like that? Oh, there it is, on the coffee table. How the fuck did it get on the coffee table? I wasn't anywhere near that fucking thing. This is total bullshit. Well, time to calmly put this delicate thing together. Story 23. When people know they are wrong and yet they still argue like they are right, it's like why? You have seen the evidence and yet you still argue? I still feel cheated when they say let's agree to disagree. Or when they say, well, that's just my opinion. Yes, and I disagree, so we are having a debate. Story 22. Slow walkers. Honest to Christ. Thousands of years of the evolution to man, finally reaching Neo Sapien, and these fucking slow walkers are throwing it all away. Story 21. Stoic ignorance, entitlement, and condescension, listed respectively. If you are in your 40s and all you do is post political memes and bitch about how no one is doing anything anymore while you work your 9 to 5 and watch Duck Dynasty until you pass out, quit complaining about the problems until you are willing to work for a solution. If you think anyone owes you anything because you are some sort of special snowflake, fuck yourself. It's a good time in the world where everyone needs to understand that they are better than no one, and no one is better than you. If you work with your equals, speak as equals, and push as equals, then you wouldn't have such a shit time. Unfortunately, a lot of people feel they are so deserving of something because of nothing they've done. If you have a title, or are well off, or for any reason feel the need to speak down to someone because you feel you're the shit, then you're the problem. There's no need to lord yourself over anyone. You should just try and be a reasonable human being and try and push toward your future, and maybe help others that wouldn't hinder that plan. Wow, wow, wow! Please leave your story in the comments! I would love to make a video on them in the future! Also, don't forget to like and subscribe! Story 20 that guy right in front of me going 55 in the left lane. Edit. Rest assured, guys, I wasn't actually driving when I made this post. Edit 2. Guys, I'm not talking about some backwater 2 lane highway. I'm talking about I-75 in ATL where you have 4 to 6 lanes and the speed limit is 55 to 65. Yet there's still some jackass riding his brakes in the left lane, stopping for some invisible car. Like, bro, are you even sentient? Story 19. Not me, but my husband. I have never seen this man raise his voice or act irrationally out of anger. But when a deadbeat family member of mine slashed all eight of our tires after we took them in and tried to help them get their life on track, my husband lost his shit and broke several of that family member's positions. It was the only time I've ever seen him lose it. Story 18. Appliances. If something is broke, it's understandable. I don't expect it to work. But for something that is not broke and mysteriously stops working for no reason, I lose my shit. I will fucking destroy you, toaster. Burn my fucking bread. Story 17. When people tell me to calm down or lighten up, it's like that person knows you're bothered and seriously thinks saying those things will help. When does that ever help that person's situation? Story 16. Excel. What do you mean Excel can't paste the data? That's your fucking job. Oh God, every time someone responds to this post with a new horror story, my blood pressure increases. Story 15. This is going to be heavy and, well, maybe not really what this thread is about, but I'm almost always calm, or at least a joker. Last night, I completely lost my shit in a nearly unrecoverable way. My girlfriend and I are moving Friday into my friend's house. He wanted roommates and asked me if I wanted to move in since my GF and I live in a shitty apartment. So... Please like and subscribe if you made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Wow, wow, wow. Story 14. I'm going to pick up my GF from a different friend's house, then take her to pick up a bed and bring it to the house we're moving into. On my way out the door, I see that my cat is laying in the middle of the doorway. She normally never does this, so I bend down to pet her and to just kind of scoot her away from the door so she doesn't get hit. She stands up, rubs her head on me, and then stumbles into the kitchen walking really low to the ground and occasionally making this really raspy meow. Earlier that morning, she was perfectly fine. 
Just had a hairball, but that wasn't unusual. I sit with her for a bit. Notice she's walking around slowly, incredibly slowly, or just finding a wall and standing with her head against it, and she collapsed at one point, onto her side. I pick her up and just start holding her. This is where I start to lose it. Her name is Raleigh. She came with the name. It's because she likes to roll a lot. If she wanted your attention, she'd walk up, meow, then plop down and roll around. She'd roll for tummy scratches. I got her when I was 8 and I'm 25 now. Anyway, I hold her and start petting her and starting to cry, begging for her to be okay. I notice she doesn't look at me. Just stares off into the distance. I call my dad but only manage to say something is wrong with Raleigh because I'm trying to not burst into tears. My dad and my stepmom get there and start to try and make me feel better. My dad is just kind of being there for me and my stepmother is checking Raleigh's heart flashing a light in her eyes. At this point, I'm almost not able to keep it together. My girlfriend gets there and suggests we go to the animal hospital. My stepmom calls them and tell her it's going to be $150 as it's about 8 p.m. plus whatever else they do. My dad immediately says he'll help me with it. We meet the vet there, and the whole time my cat is basically unresponsive. She's there, but not really there. The vet runs some tests, some urine tests too, comes back and says that she has kidney failure, some other organ issues, and that her motor functions are not very good, that she seems to have neurological issues, and that she appears to not be able to see. He asks if we want to do treatment or to euthanize her. He walks outside to give me a minute. I can only sob. I ask everyone what I should do. My dad says he'll be back and goes to talk to the vet. I guess the vet told him that my cat is so old it would be like treating a 90-year-old who can't tell you her problems. And that even if I did the treatment for what he thinks is wrong I'd be out close to 1k and Raleigh would only have maybe 3 months, but her quality of life wouldn't be good. I eventually tell my dad to tell the vet that I want to euthanize her. The sound she made when he poked the needle into her arm broke my goddamn heart. I bawled the whole time. When we go to leave with Raleigh wrapped in my arms, the vet wants to know how we're going to cover it. The charge is up to 260. My dad immediately offers to pay it in full. My girlfriend takes me outside and lets me get in the car by myself. I screamed and bawled. I screamed so hard my voice is ragged. Raleigh was my constant companion. When times were bad, she was there, rubbing her head against me and loving the base of her tail padded. We took her to my dad's house, which is where I was raised and she spent most of her life. My dad pulled his car up and used to the headlights so he could dig a grave in Arkansas's notoriously rocky earth. I couldn't take the day off. My manager is out of town and I'm the only one who can cover the front desk. Every single thing today is about to set me off. I just want to scream at these people who get so bent out of shape over the smallest imperfection in their fucking lives. My coworker asked me what was wrong and said that. You're upset because your cat died? Not like your mom died. I'm sorry for your loss. I understand the loss of a dear pet. It's like losing a family member. Story 13. The sentence, I'm a great drunk driver. There's almost no other combination of words that makes me flip out on people. Story 12. Having my headphones get caught on something at the gym and ripped out of my ears. Being poked in the ribs and or head area. When something mechanical doesn't start slash work properly right away. Self-degradation. I mean, shut up and get your mopey ass out of here. These cause an irrational level of hatred within me, and I don't know why. I am usually pretty calm and well-tempered. <laughs> Story 11. People who constantly talk about how stupid other people are, whether it's politics or work, it's always just, yeah, it's because that person slash idea is retarded. The worst part about it is these are the same people who won't ever change their opinion. So I just sit and listen because arguing would be a waste of breath. <laughs> Story 10. So I try to be the friendly guy at work. Talk yo everyone. Be personable and stuff. I have a strange metric for anger. I generally say I'm frustrated but not angry or mad. In fact, I say I've only ever been angry twice in my life. Once during the only fight I've ever been in. And once via text at an example. I don't like the feeling. I try to keep it in check because I blow up and it's scary. I say this because I remember losing my shit at work over something innocuous. Margarine. This guy, who I'll call Tim, comes in the break room, and he's generally okay, but he's awkward and kind of weird sometimes. Anyways, he starts talking about food, and how he doesn't eat margarine because it's fake and artificial, and he saw that it was one molecule away from plastic, and for whatever fucking reason I lost on him, ranting about butter and margarine, and how it's been around for 150 years, and was invented on challenge of Napoleon III. Not politics, religion, work, relationships, film, but a fucking butter substitute caused me to lose it. Please like and subscribe if you made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Wow, wow, wow. 
Story 12. Having my headphones get caught on something at the gym and ripped out of my ears. Being poked in the ribs and or head area. When something mechanical doesn't start or work properly right away. Self-degradation. I mean, shut up and get your mopey ass out of here. These cause an irrational level of hatred within me and I don't know why. I am usually pretty calm and well-tempered. Story 11. People who constantly talk about how stupid other people are, whether it's politics or work, it's always just, yeah, it's because that person slash idea is retarded. The worst part about it is these are the same people who won't ever change their opinion, so I just sit and listen because arguing would be a waste of breath. Story 10. So I try to be the friendly guy at work, talk yo everyone, be personable and stuff. I have a strange metric for anger. I generally say I'm frustrated but not angry or mad. In fact, I say I've only ever been angry twice in my life. Once during the only fight I've ever been in, and once via text at an example I don't like the feeling. I try to keep it in check because I blow up and it's scary. I say this because I remember losing my shit at work over something innocuous. Margarine. This guy, we'll call him Tim, comes in the break room, and he's generally okay, but he's awkward and kind of weird sometimes. Anyways, he starts talking about food, and how he doesn't eat margarine because it's fake and artificial, and he saw that it was one molecule away from plastic, and for whatever fucking reason I lost on him, ranting about butter and margarine, and how it's been around for 150 years, and was invented on challenge of Napoleon III. Not politics, religion, work, relationships, film, but a fucking butter substitute caused me to lose it. Story 9. Basic life incompetence and inconsideration for others. Like standing in a line forever and then still needing to read the menu. For example, it's just rude. You've got the time. Read it. In fact, read the signs everywhere you go instead of asking every other person the same question. If you don't read English or have vision problems, cool. But if you're just too lazy to use your own brain, you can get lost. Literally, in some cases. Story 8. When people build their entire business around a gazillion stupid Excel files with no context or regard to even add the data properly and they just expect me to fix the turd sandwich they've created over the years. Don't be fucking assholes with your data people. Wow, wow, wow! Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Story 7. Cruelty to animals, kids, or elderly. Basically, someone picking on someone not their own size. I turned from Jesus Buddha into homicidal raging maniac in 0.2 seconds. Story 6. People that shit on innovation. Oh, Resident Evil changed the perspective from third person to first person? The game is now shit and they do not care for their fans. Oh, this new franchise of movie tries something mildly innovative. It is shit. I want my money back. Oh, Game of Thrones had an episode a little bit less exciting this week. The show is shit now and the writers are fucking kidding. Story 5 I am known IRL to take shit from people and stay calm. She wouldn't hurt a fly. She has such a calm demeanor and is just the sweetest person. But the moment I log on to Overwatch and get camped by the same asshole, usually Genji or Tracer, over and over again, you better believe that desks will be punched and obscenities will be yelled. My boyfriend said I am a different person when I play online games. Story 4 Sadism. That moment something in a person comes to the surface that shows that they're capable of finding satisfaction and fulfillment out of other people's pain or suffering. Story 3. Getting on to someone when it wasn't their fault or were doing as they were told. Chewed out someone of higher rank one time for this. An E3 was told to do something by an E4 and followed through. E5 chewed out the E3 when it didn't work. Me being an E4 at the time took the E5 aside and chewed him out. I got threatened with loss of rank and paid, but I didn't care. It was wrong. He came back 30 minutes later apologized to me and the E3. As chewing went to the E4, I picked up the next month and became an E5. LOL. Story 2. Some drunk guy sat on my boyfriend's birthday cake. I totally lost it and started shouting at him. And my boyfriend was just starring in horror as the drunk guy apologized. Story 1. 
When dumb mofos in traffic don't bother to judge the momentum of the traffic in front of them and end up blocking the intersection for the people going across it. Yeah! Thanks for watching! And make sure to click the subscription button for more more and more Franken stories! Hope see you soon! Bye bye Weston Wild Bye! Toasty.